नमस्कार बड़े हर्ष का विषय है कि कंटिन्यूंग वेटररी एजुकेशन प्रोग्राम के अंतर्गत और ही लाइफ साइंसेस कंपनी द्वारा सी एस आर मत के अंतर्गत कंटिन्यूंग वेटररी एजुकेशन प्रोग्राम का आयोजन किया जा रहा है जो कि हम सबके लिए बहुत अच्छा है और इसका जो विषय है वेटनरी एक्पंचर एवं ट्रेडिशनल चाइनीज वेटनरी मेडिसिन इस विषय पर थ्री बिग्स का जो ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम किया जा रहा है ये वास्तव में बहुत अच्छा है और पशु चिकित्सकों के लिए देश के उनको तकनीकी विज्ञान को उच्चतम शिखर पर ले जाना एवं नई तकनीकी ज्ञान के लिए बहुत आवश्यक है मैं कंपनी के एमडी डॉक्टर विशाल शर्मा का भी हृदय से अभिनंदन करता हूं कि हमारे बीच उन्होंने विश्व के प्रख्यात पशु चिकित्सक डॉक्टर स्टेरिन को आमंत्रित किया है मुख्य वक्ता के रूप में मुझे लगता है कि देश के समस्त पशु चिकित्सक जो भी इस ट्रेनिंग में भाग लेंगे वो इसका लाभ लेंगे आज के वर्तमान समय में ये बहुत बड़ी आवश्यकता है कि कंटिन्यूंग वेटनरी एजुकेशन प्रोग्राम हर स्तर पर चलाया जाना चाहिए इसको सरकार की ओर से भी वेटनरी काउंसिल की ओर से भी हमारे एन भी एसोसिएशन भी सभी लोग अगर इस पर फोकस करते हैं तो आने वाले समय में हम सब मिलके वेटनरी प्रोफेशन को आगे ले जाने का काम करेंगे और ऐसी हमारी संस्थाएं ऐसी हमारी कंपनियां जो सी एस आर मन में जो काम कर रही हैं वेटनरी काउंसिल ऑफ इंडिया की ओर से हम उनका हार्दिक अभिनंदन करते हैं कि हमारे पशु चिकित्सकों के तकनीकी ज्ञान को उच्चतम शिखर पर ले जाने के लिए एवं नई तकनीक जो भी नई तकनीक आ रही है उनका ज्ञान उनको हो जिससे पशुपालकों को भी लाभ मिलेगा देश के अंदर वन हेल्थ एक बहुत बड़ा इस वक्त विषय है कि एनिमल हेल्थ ह्यूमन हेल्थ इन्वायरमेंटल हेल्थ हेल्थ सभी की हेल्थ जब ठीक होगी तभी तब जब ही कल हमारा उद्देश्य पूरा होगा इसमें इस प्रकार कंटिन्यूंग वेटनरी एजुकेशन के प्रोग्राम जो आयोजित किया जा रहा है उससे मुझे लगता है हम जो वन हेल्थ का जो कंसेप्ट है और हमारे पशुपालन में जो दिन प्रतिदिन नई तकनीकी आ रही है उसमें किसानों को पशुपालकों को भी लाभ मिलेगा और वन हेल्थ का जो हमारा कंसेप्ट है उसको भी हम पूरा करेंगे मुझे लगता है कि मैं पुनः ओरिजिनल लाइफ साइंसेस कंपनी को एवं उनके एमडी डॉक्टर विशाल शर्मा जी को का पुनः अभिनंदन करता हूँ वेटनरी काउंसिल ऑफ इंडिया की ओर से कि आगे भी वो इस प्रकार के कार्यक्रम वेटरनियन के लिए आयोजित करेंगे तो मुझे हम सबको खुशी होगी और हम सब मिलके इस देश के अंदर पशु चिकित्सकों के तकनीकी ज्ञान को और उच्चतम शिखर पर ले जाने का काम करेंगे बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद So we will first start an introduction to veterinary acupuncture. So I just want to introduce myself quickly because Dr. Vishal Sharma already introduced me. But I graduated in France in 2005, and uh, I had several experiences working abroad. But I was first exposed to TCVM while while I was working in Singapore. So the Chinese vet used like a Chinese herbal medicine to treat the cancer patient. and at the beginning i was a little bit doubtful about the results but i have to see that the dogs was still alive after several months and i wanted like to to learn more about this new new medicine so then i was in vietnam for 10 years and in vietnam acupuncture it's very common so even the vet at the vet school they have like a course about veterinary acupuncture So I start learning at the vet university and then I wanted to learn more and get a um, certificate in uh, acupuncture and TCVM that's why I follow the course at the Chi University so I got uh, certified in veterinary acupuncture and then I follow my studies about the Chinese herbal medicine and then about the food therapy too So this is just some um, picture when I went to Korea and to China to learn about this uh, medicine. So we will be together for three webinar. So the goal of this session will be like to discover the TCVM and also to understand the theory of that this medicine. And of course you will be able to start practicing and also to start using acupuncture in your daily cases like in the clinic this is really important and i hope that you will enjoy this new tool that you will have in your hands so today we will have the introduction about the veterinary acupuncture and also we'll have a huge part about the basic tcvm theories so this is very important to understand the chinese medicine 
and we'll finish with something more technical about the acupunct and how to do the acupuncture techniques. The next Saturday, we'll go deeper and we'll see how to select the acupunct. We'll look at the TCVM consult and we'll see how you can use acupuncture in your daily practice. And the last Saturday will be even more practical with a lot of cases. So we'll see the goal of acupuncture for the geriatric patient. We'll have a look at the acupuncture for IVDD and especially for cats. So let's start now with traditional Chinese veterinary medicine, which is called TCVM. So it's a very ancient form of medicine. We have records more than 3000 years for the human and for the pets, it's used since 2000 years. But even if it's a very old kind of medicine, it's very compatible to use with the current concept of the modern medicine. And in fact, we have four branches in the TCVM treatment. So the first one, the main one is the acupuncture. Then the Chinese herbal medicine is the second one. Then we have the twina, which is a kind of uh, specific massage therapy. And the last one, but not the least, it's the food therapy. So a quick history about veterinary acupuncture. If you just have to remember one name, it's Bole, because it's called the father of the acupuncture. And it was, of course, an equine expert. So we have record about 2000 years ago using acupuncture for, I mean, at that time it was mostly for horses. I hope that you can see the correct slides. So now we'll go and see exactly what is an acupunct, because of course we don't have acupuncture without acupuncts. And acupuncts, they are not any area in the body, it's specific place. So in Chinese, it's called shu shui. Shu, it's for communication, and shui, it's hole or depression. So in fact, in the body, sometimes even you can feel like a small hole. So this is most probably an acupunct. So it's specific area under the skin, in the fascia and the muscle. And in this specific place, we have a high concentration of nerves, blood vessels, lymph ducts, and connective tissue and mast cells. And the very important thing, it's in this acupunct, we have the qi. So the qi is really, really important for Chinese medicine. The qi, it's really, it's like the life force. Like where there is qi, there is life. So it's a really important concept of Chinese medicine. It's called the fundamental substance of the universe. So it's the energy force that flows through the body. And if we stop the qi, or if it's insufficient, or if it's like unbalanced, it can call illness in the body. So where there is qi, there is life. So now in your body, the qi is flowing well, so you are feeling good. Like in your computer, there is no qi, so there is no life. So it's really what differences the life and not, not the life. And in this specific acupuncture point, if we study them, we see that the electrical resistance is very low, but the electrical conductivity is very high. And we also find a high density of free nerves ending of arterioles, lymphatic vessels, and mast cells. So it's really important area. And then they are all connected to each other. So we can do like a map on the body to see all the acupunct because we have what we call the acupunct channel. A channel is also called a meridian, it's the same. So it's, uh, it's like a network to link all the tissue and organs. And in fact, the chi, the energy, is flowing through all the meridian. So in the body, we have like 14 meridians. We have 12 major meridians plus two extra ones. So a total of 14. And in all this meridian, in the normal condition, the energy flow all the time from one acupuncture point to the other. And if the flow, if the chi stop, then there is what we call a stagnation of energy, and then there is a blockage, and this is causing pain in the body. So here it's an example of the map that like you can do with all the channel, like you see BL, it's like the bladder channel. So on this channel, you can see all the number is different points. And then we have like that 14 channel through the, through the body. So the 14 channel, on each 
channel, we have a specific number of points. So for example, the bladder one, it's the largest one, and we have 67 points on this only channel. So at the total, we have around 150 acupuncture that are commonly used to treat the disease of the pets. So it's quite a lot. So you have this chi, which is flowing through all this channel, but there is what we call a circadian flow. So it means that the 12 regular channels join one another at their origin and termini. So in fact, it's an endless cyclical flow, but still there is a specific order, meaning that the chi is flowing through all the channel all the time, but the energy dominates each channel for two hours. So we can have this kind of clock. So in fact, the cycle starts at 3 a.m. in the morning. So from 3 to 5 a.m., so for two hours, the chi is flowing everywhere, but it will be higher in the lung area. So this can be important because you can understand why like a cat with uh, asthma issue can have more attack early in the morning. It's in fact very logic because the energy is higher in the lung area. So of course, if he has some issue with the lung, then the attack will be higher early in the morning. This you can use also sometimes to, um, to find the best timing to give the medicine. Like for example, if you have a pet with a heart condition and he's taking heart medicine and the owner is asking you when is the best time to give the medicine, maybe you can tell him it's better between 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. because the heart, the chi will be higher in this area. Or if you have a dog with a kidney failure, then maybe it's better to give the medicine in the evening time between five to seven because the chi will be higher in this kidney. So of course it will be a better time. So the acupuncture, how we call the acupuncture is quite easy because it's named by the channel and the number on the, that channel. For example, the long nine will be the ninth acupuncture on the long channel. And of course, every acupuncture has a specific effect. Like for example, the lung nine will be, its function will be to support the lung. But we have also another category of points. So we have all these points that are on a specific meridian, but some points are not associated with any specific channel. So they have a specific location, but not on the meridian. Of course, they have a special effect. And for this acupoint, the name will be in Chinese. Like for example, this is Nao Shu. So this will not be like a number, will be a Chinese name. And uh, we have 77 extra acupoints for the dogs and cats. So you can see that it's already a lots of points and a lots of options. So now you understand that we have the chi flowing through the body and we have specific area, which we call the acupoint. So how we can stimulate now our points? So the easiest way is simply to put the needle, just put the needle alone. This is called the dry needle acupuncture. And we will see that we already have an effect just by the needle. Sometimes we want a higher effect so we can connect the needle to the electroacupuncture machine. And then we have the effect of the needle and the electricity. So we will have a higher effect. Sometimes we want to uh, put heat over the acupuncture. So we will use what we call the moxa stick, and it's called the moxibution. And we can also use the aqua acupuncture. In this case, we will directly inject something in the acupuncture. We have also the implant, like we will leave something forever in the point, so the stimulation will never stop. And the last one also, it's the laser. Like maybe you will be too scared to put the needle or the pets is too afraid of the needle or the owner doesn't want needles. But if you have a laser machine, you can still use also the laser to stimulate your acupuncture. Of course, the best will be to put a needle, but sometimes it can be useful. So how acupuncture works. So in case of disease, it means that we have a disrupt of the normal bodily function. So the goal of acupuncture will be to restore the normal body homeostasis. So it will allow kinet healing and regeneration processes to function optimally. So it means like in Chinese medicine, we have disease if we have like an imbalance in the body and the goal of acupuncture will be to restore the balance. 
So what's acupuncture? So first we put the needle in the acupuncture and then this will have physiological changes in all the body. So nowadays we know that it will release beta endorphin. So the effect will be like to relieve the pain. We also know that just by putting the needle in this specific point, we'll have an increase of the white blood cell titer of antibody T cell. So it can be very useful to treat any case of amino deficiency. We also know nowadays that it will increase the gastrointestinal motility and many other effects, like it has an anti-inflammation effect, anti-fever effect. So how it works? So in fact, we have a local stimulation, so it will stimulate the local nerves reflex. It will also affect the local structure near the acupuncture and also the internal organ near the acupuncture. But we will also have a central effect, so it will stimulate directly the brain. So it can create generalized effect. That's why we have a change in the hormones and the chemical throughout the body. So we have the local effect where we put the needle, but also the central one. In these studies, the scientific wanted to show the evidence of the acupuncture. So on the top, you have the MRI of the normal patient. In the middle one, it's the brain of the patient with pain. And on the bottom, it's the same patient who received acupuncture treatment for the pain. So you can see the difference on the middle one and then the result after the acupuncture. So we really see that there is some reaction even in the central brain. So the good thing is like nowadays, acupuncture is more and more study. Even like the vets in the US, a lot of vets, they are doing like PhD. And for that, they have to, uh, to do some paper and some research. So if you go on internet and you type acupuncture in PubMed, for example, now you have a lot of references. And this is very good because it supports the effectiveness of acupuncture because it's used for now more than 2000 years old. So we know that it's working, but now we can even scientifically prove how it's working. So this is very important. In this uh, specific study, they wanted to see like the difference between acupuncture against surgery for IVDD patient. So they took 40 dogs with severe neurological signs, the thoracolumbar IVDD, and they did three groups. So the first one has the surgery, the second one has only the electroacupuncture, and the last group has the surgery followed with by the acupuncture. And we can see this is the result after um, treatment and the improvement and the end change after treatment. And we see that the best improvement was only after the acupuncture, like 78.9% was feeling better after the improvement, after the, um, the acupuncture session. So in these studies, they show that electroacupuncture was even more effective than the surgery. So we will have a specific um, lecture about IVDD and you will see that it's really, really useful. So you can ask, why should I use acupuncture? Nowadays, we have a lot of medicine. We have a lot of, uh, of uh, treatment available. So why should I use a medicine that is all that 2000 years old? Because you can, of course, you can integrate with your conventional treatment. So there is no like uh, either I use Chinese medicine or I use allopathic medicine. You can integrate. It's always the best. You can use both. Either because you want to reduce the dosage of the conventional drugs, or you want to reduce the side effect of these drugs, or the duration of this treatment. So like sometimes, let's take an example, you have a cat, or an asthmatic cat, he's taking corticosteroid to control his attack, but now he has a kidney failure. So corticosteroid is not really good, so the owner doesn't want to continue the medicine, but he's having more attacks, so what can you do? Now you have a new tool. You can always say, let's try acupuncture. Let's see. Most probably you will be able to control his asthma attack with the acupuncture. So you see, you can use this one to reduce or even like avoid using the conventional medicine. Sometimes it's also because you don't want to use the surgery, either because the risk is too high or because the price is too expensive or the, the dogs is too, is too old to support the surgery. 
The same like uh, example for cats who has um, like a lot of uh, mega colon, who had a lot of surgery. If you use acupuncture, I always have success like treating this mega colon with acupuncture and no need of surgery. I had cats who had like more than 10 surgery to remove the feces. And the day we use acupuncture, they were doing fine. So you see, it's a new tool. Usually you will use acupuncture when your conventional treatment is not working anymore or when you don't have the medicine to treat the pets or when the result is not there, then you don't know what to do, what to offer to your, to your customer. Now you will have a new tool that you can try. What to expect now with acupuncture? Of course, it's not magic. The effect sometimes, if you are very lucky, it can be seen immediately or within a few days, but usually you need more time. So the effects are cumulative. So it's really important to explain to the owner that, of course, it's not magic, it's still medicine. And if you start the treatment, usually you need multiple treatment. So we, we will see later, we have like this rule of three treatment, at least three sessions. And then if really we don't see any improvement after the three uh, sessions of acupuncture, maybe we can stop. But if we see even sometimes a small improvement, then it's better to continue. So it's really important to have this maintenance treatment. Now, what disorder can you treat with acupuncture? The answer is almost any disorder. So of course you have like all the musculoskeletal disorder. This is very well known. You know that you can use for any lameness and neck and back pain, for arthritis patient, for tendon and ligament disorder, IVDD. This is very useful. But also something that maybe you are not very familiar. It's like you can use acupuncture for dermatologic disorder. And this can be good because, of course, you can combine with your conventional therapy, but it will be very useful to reduce prurit, inflammation, and to promote tissue healing. You know that dermatologic disorders are not the easy cases, and in the, um, allopathic medicine, sometimes you don't have really the solution that you give, like medicine to, uh, to help the pets to feel better, but is not really recovering. Sometimes in Chinese medicine, you can heal the pets. Of course, it's not the easy cases. Of course, it's, you have to add acupuncture, Chinese herbal medicine, and food therapy. But in some cases, you can really treat the allergic disorder. And we will see later also that we have some very useful acupuncture points, like what we call the symptomatic points. Like we have one point, you put your needle and then you will reduce the prurit. Let's say like a dog is scratching all day long, the owner cannot sleep, the dog cannot sleep. Then you can show your owner, put one needle and maybe that night the dog will sleep, the owner will sleep. And then he will trust you to do your acupuncture because you will really see the result with just one needle. Of course, this is more common. You can use acupuncture for all the neurological disorder, like the seizure, the paralysis, and again, it can be com combined with the conventional therapy. So the effect of acupuncture in this case will be to control the seizure, to reduce the inflammation, and also to promote the nerve regeneration. For ophthalmological disorder, it can also be useful. Of course, this is not the case that you will start at the beginning because it will uh, imply points around the, uh, near the ears area, the eyes area, sorry. So of course, if you are not very like uh, sure, it's better not to do this one, but still you can reduce the intraocular pressure and reduce the inflammation and still promote the tissue healing. So sometimes if you have a pet who is very nice and you can put your needle, he has some ice issue and with few needles around the eyes, you can already help him. For the behavior disorder, this is also something like quite uh, common. You can treat all the separation anxiety, the thunderstorm phobia or the aggression. Always you can combine with the conventional therapy at the beginning and then the goal will be to slowly decrease your conventional medicine. The effect of acupuncture in this case will be to reduce the anxiety, reduce the anger, and promote relaxation of the pets. 
For cardiac disorder, I know that, of course, we have a lot of modern medicine to treat these cases, so no worries, but still you can just keep in mind that you can also use acupuncture for these cases. In case of your dog doesn't accept the, the medicine or some owner nowadays, they don't want to use like the medicine and they want something more natural. So you can still use acupuncture. And in this case, the effect will be to increase the heart muscle strength, reduce the fluid accumulation, reduce the arrhythmia and increase the stamina. So it can be still useful. For the pulmonary disorder, we will see and the, um, for the cats that it's very useful for the asthma cats, for the, um, like the upper respiratory diseases, like all the coriza, the chronic coriza for cats. And uh, the goal of this um, acupuncture will be again to reduce inflammation, to help the breathe and to control the anxiety and the panic. A very important effect also is for all the gastrointestinal disorder. I guess it's not something that you will think first when you think about acupuncture, but it's very useful, like for the colleague, the anorexia patients, the vomiting and diarrhea. Again, it can be combined with the conventional therapy, but the goal of this acupuncture will be to reduce the pain, the gastrointestinal pain, and also to restore the smooth muscle function control the diarrhea and vomiting, and stimulate appetite. We will see later, I think during the next, uh, the second webinar, like some symptomatic points, which will be very useful to stimulate the appetite, to stop the diarrhea and stop the vomiting. So this is something that you can use even in your daily practice. Like you have a pet, an hospitalized pet that is not eating anything, I will teach you one point that you will put after five minutes, 95% of pets will eat. So this can be very, very useful. For the renal disorder also, it's, uh, it's used and I'm following a lot of cases. And uh, the acupuncture effect will be to increase again the appetite if your dog is not eating. It will relieve the pain, improve the sphincter and the bladder tone and restore proper smooth muscle function. So it's very useful for the kidney failure, but also for the incontinence dog. For the reproductive disorder, also this is not the most common use, but still you can use it to correct the hormonal imbalance, correct the uterine motility and reduce the stress. Some cases that I follow, it's like uh, for the infertility issue. Endocrine disorder, the same thing nowadays, you have a lot of uh, Western medicine, very useful for all these conditions, but sometimes the dog is not responding very well. Nowadays, I'm following uh, a dog who has a Cushing disease and he was like very sick with the Western medicine. And I'm following uh, this dog now for six, seven months and he's taking only the acupuncture and the Chinese herbal and is doing very well. So of course, it's not the easy case, not the case that you will start with, but if you go further, it's really something that you can also help this patient with the endocrine disorder. As we say, acupuncture is very useful for the immune disorder because it will balance the immune system, it will reduce the overactive immune system, reduce the inflammation and stimulate the immune system in immunodeficiency patient. Those, this is something also very useful. And now this is very good, the acupuncture for all your cancer patients. We have two cases, like either the dog is taking chemotherapy, but he has a lot of side effects, like he's vomiting, he's not eating, then acupuncture is very useful to treat all these side effects. But sometimes you can use also just like a uh, salt therapy, because the owner either doesn't want the chemotherapy medicine, or it's too expensive, or the dog is too weak to support the chemotherapy. So nowadays you have no, no option to offer to your pets, but then now you will have acupuncture and herbal medicine, because I'm following a lot, a lot of cancer patients and we have very good results. Like we can really like uh, keep these pets for a few to several months, and they are living, they have a good quality of life with the treatment, meaning like they are feeling good and they are not feeling pain, they are eating well. So this is something like very, very useful. And we will see it on the third webinar. 
So this is just like if you want after this free webinar, you want to go further, you can check these two websites when you can follow some, uh, some classes. So just to sum up, I want also to, uh, to tell you that acupuncture is very safe, meaning like you should not be scared. Like, of course, at the beginning, you are not very sure about the location of the point. You are, don't know, you, you are scared to try, but you should not because it's very safe. Meaning if you put a needle on the wrong place, you will not harm your patient. Like the worst case will be like, it will not feel better, but it will not, not feel worse. You can use also acupuncture for many different diseases, many species, and it can be always integrated with your conventional treatment. So it's something like very easy and you can, it's very safe and effective. So just here, I write my email in case you have some question, but we will uh, let you know at the end that we will have also a WhatsApp group where you will be able to ask all your questions and where I will be able to reply to all of you. So this was just like the first presentation about uh, introduction and to let you know how acupuncture works. Now we will go to maybe the, not the easy part, but something which is very important. And I have to, uh, to talk about this, even if I know it's a, a huge part and it's very hard like to sum up all this information in 30 minutes, but this is really important and this is what will do the difference between like uh, what we call like the cookbook acupuncture method and really the TCVM acupuncture. Meaning like some people, some vets or some doctor use the acupuncture like a cookbook, like, okay, I have pain in my hip. I know that I have to put this point and then I will feel better. You will see the result. Of course, the pets will be better, but maybe will be better for one, one day, few days. But it will not treat the, the condition, like the reason why your pets feel pain in the hip. If you really want to go further, you have to learn a little bit about the TCVM theories. And when you know about these theories, you can find your TCVM diagnostic. And then it's easy because when you have your TCVM diagnostic, then you can choose more needles. Of course, you will put some needles, the same as the cookbook needles, because if you have pain in the hip, you have to put this kind of points. But if you have your diagnostic, then you will be able to add some points and to really treat your pattern. And then your dog will feel better and will have a result for a long time. So that's why we really have to talk about this basic TCVM theories. So again, you remember from the first balance, we have what we call the chi. So if you remember what I just say, the chi is the energy flow, it's the life. Where there is chi, there is life. And the disease is the disrupt of the normal bodily function. There is an imbalance in your body. And the goal of your acupuncture will be to restore normal body homeostasis, to restore the balance. And for that, we need the TCVM diagnosis, what we call the TCVM pattern, to identify the imbalance. We have to find where is the imbalance and what is not balanced. Like, is it the chi, is it the yin, is it the yang? And where is this uh, imbalance in the body? Is it in a specific organ? And then you have your TCVM diagnosis. So when you have your pattern, you find the imbalance in the body. So for that, we have to talk a little bit about the TCVM theories and uh, we will have to do what we call a TCVM examination. Of course, you have to do your basic clinical examination, but we will see the little difference that we have to do to do a TCVM examination. And with all that, we have what we call the Biang Zheng. So Biang Zheng in Chinese, it's like the TCVM diagnostic, okay? So this is what we will see now. So let's start with something that maybe all of you knows, and it's really like something, uh, it's like the foundation of the TCVM, it's the yin yang theories. So I guess all of you know this symbol. So you all know that it's, they are all complementary, interconnected and interdependent. And we have the yin, which is like the moon aspect, 
and we have the yang, which is like the sun aspect. And we can see that they are interconnected because like you see in the symbol, you have the yang part, the white part, but inside you still have a small black hole. And this is like the yin inside the yang. And this is just like for information, but it's, uh, it's, it's very, I think, uh, easy. I mean, nice to see it because if you check the symbol, the Chinese symbol of the yin and the yang, you can understand like the yin, the drawing, and the meaning of the character of this one is the hill, cold and cloudy. And the yin is all this uh, dark side. And the yang, if you see, we find again the hill, but in this case, the hill is sunny and light. So even in the character, in Chinese medicine, everything is very logic. So even in the character, you understand the meaning of the yin and the yang. So the difference between yin and yang, the yin is all the dark. So it's the night, it's the winter season, it's the dark color and the quiet activity. On the contrary, the yang, it's the day, it's the summer, it's the hot, it's the bright, and it's very active. So the yin is female and the yang is male. This I'm not really sure because usually female are quite active, but this is like that. So the yin is more weak, small, and, the, um, and the, um, the chi of the blood is more the blood side. But the yang is like strong, it's large, and it's the chi. So it's really the life. And we have five principles of this yin yang. It means like everything in the universe has two opposite aspects, the yin and the yang. Like we have the day, we have the night. Any yin-yang division can be further divided into yin and yang aspect. And yin and yang control each other and they mutually create each other and they can transform into each other. Like you understand like the sunset. We say that the day is yang, the night is yin. But the sunset, it's the yang transforming into yin. And like the sunrise, it's the yin who is transforming into the yang, into the day. So you may say this is very nice, but what is the medical application of this yin and yang? It's the same, like we say, it's a balance of yin and yang. So in the body, it's the same. We should have the balance between the yin and the yang. And the goal of the TCVM is always to maintain the balance. So if we have disease, it means that we have either an excess pattern or a deficiency pattern. And the goal of your acupuncture will be to restore the balance. So if we have an excess pattern, we have what we call an excess young pattern. So you remember young, it's the hot, it's the day. So in this case, your pets will have an acute condition because it's an excess. He will have a hot fever and he will feel very hot. He will have a red tongue. His pulse will, will be very strong. Everything is excess, but excess in the um, activity and in the hot area. On the contrary, if you have excess yin, in this case, again, it will be an acute condition, but then your pet will feel very, very cold. He will, he will have a very pale tongue. So this is the excess condition. On the contrary, we have what we call the deficiency. In this case, if we have what we call a deficient young pattern, it will be a chronic condition. And this is what you will see more in acupuncture because you remember you will see the patient that you cannot treat properly with your, with your Western medicine. So usually it's the chronic condition that lasts for long and the pet is very weak and tired. So if it's more a deficient young, he will have also some real link weakness. He will feel very weak. If it's more a yin pattern, it's again a chronic condition, but he will have a fever, but it's not like a high fever, like in the excess, because it doesn't have a excess of yang, like it doesn't have too much hot in his body, but the yin, we can compare the yin has the um, AC of the body, the air conditioning. So in this deficient yin patient, like the air conditioning is not working well. So meaning they always feel a little bit hot, but not because they have too much heat in the body, it's because they cannot control the temperature. So they have fever, but it's a low grade fever. Let's check at the case. So this is a two years old 
a very high energy border collie. So they have very energetic dog. And uh, you see him, he has an acute cough. He's here and his back feels very hot. He has a high fever. His tongue is very red. So in this case, we have what we call an excess young condition. Because in this case, he has too much heat in, in his body. But on the contrary, we have a 15 years old dog, a Jack Russell. So already you feel that maybe it's something more chronic because he is very old, he is very restless, he is very anxious. He's here and his back is warm, not hot, but warm. His tongue is red and dry. So in this case, we have what we call a yin deficiency. You see, it's not the same. It's not excess because he's a very old dog. He has a chronic condition. He feels warm, but it's not hot. It's because he cannot control his temperature. So I know it's a lot of information, but it's important to have this basic information to understand. So now we have the very important thing. It's the eight principle. It's really what will help you to classify your disease. Like it's an easy classification. We have to find first if your disease is more young or yin. So this we already have some information about. Then we have to check if the um, condition is more an exterior condition or interior one. We will see in a minute if it's more hot or cold or if it's more an excess or a deficiency medicine. So young or yin, this we just discussed. A disease is young if it's hot. An excess, it's more yin if it's cold or deficient. Exterior and interior, it's also quite easy to understand. We say that a disease, it's more an exterior disease if it affects the surface, like the skin, the hair, the muscle. So usually it's easier to treat because it's not the internal medicine. On the contrary, the interior disease affects the internal organ. So, of course, it will be more difficult to treat and it will take more time. An example to understand better, we have a two years dog with an acute onset of sneezing. So it affects the external part, so the nose. So, of course, it's an exterior disease. On the contrary, we have a dog with a jaundice. It will affect his liver in internal organ, so it's an interior disease. So the external pattern, as I say, usually they are easier to treat because it's an acute condition and it's a short disease, but the interior one affects the interior organ. So usually it's uh, harder to treat. Hot and cold, this again, it's quite easy to uh, separate. And it's very important because you understand already that you remember we say your acupuncture is there to maintain the balance. So, of course, see if we have too much heat in the body, what we will do, we will clear the heat. And if we have too much cold, we will simply clear the cold of the body to maintain the balance. And this is the very important classification between the excess and deficiency. An excess pattern, again, is easier to treat. So usually the excess one, you will not see, or you will not really treat them by acupuncture. Because again, it's the example of the, uh, of the small kitten or the small dog who has like a flu, but a very high fever. So of course, what you have to use, you have to use antibiotics and you have to use your conventional medicine. And usually it will feel better quite quick. So the one you will see, it's more the deficiency pattern because of course this one needs a longer treatment like the kidney failure dog this old dog is suffering from a long time and you try already a lot of medicine but his condition is not getting better or sometimes it's even getting worse and you don't know which medicine you can have so what you have to do in this case now you can try your new tool that you have in your hand it's acupuncture so this is to sum up what I just say, so the excess pattern, usually it's a young animal. It's an acute onset. He has a strong constitution. He can have a high fever. He can feel pain. So this is the, the puppy. It doesn't like to be touched. So of course, also, they are not the best patient for acupuncture. And usually this one, you will use your Western medicine. But the deficiency pattern, it's the very old pets that you will see with chronic disease. 
they are very weak, they are very tired, they can have fever, but it will be a low grade fever. But these dogs, usually they like massage, they like to be pet, and they will be a good pet for the acupuncture session. So, oops, sorry, I went too fast. So anyway, we have this example, which is a cat, a six years old cat. This one has acute onset of nasal discharge. He has a high fever. So of course, this is more exterior or interior disease. You understand, you remember, it's the nose, it's the external parts, it's not the internal organ. So we have an exterior disease. This is more an excess condition because the cat is not too old and he has what we say an acute onset of nasal discharge and he has fever. So we have an excess condition and it's a hot condition. So usually this case, if everything goes well, we will give him some antibiotics and he will recover quite easily. So now we go further and we have what we call the five elements. Because to remember, we say that the acupuncture will treat the imbalance, but we have to identify where is the imbalance, in which organ. And this is why we need to know about the five elements. It's the foundation of the Biangzeng. You remember Biangzeng is the TCVM diagnostic, and it's a very important theory. It means that there is five fundamental elements in the universe, in the universe and also in the body. And the five elements, of course, they are related to each other. So let's have a look at these five elements. So the five elements are the wood, the fire, the earth, the metal, and the water. So you see they are all connected. And we will see later that each element, they have also a TCVM organ. So this will be very useful to find where you have your imbalance in the body. So some information about these five elements. So the first one is the wood. So the wood also, it's called the spring. It's at the spring season. And the climate related to this element is the wind. The color is the green because usually in spring, all the trees, they have the leaves. So it's a lot of green color. And the emotion is the anger. And the TCVM organ is the liver. So the liver is connected to the wood element. And this element opens through the eyes. And the tissue related to this element is the tendon and the ligament. So in a few minutes, we will see that also to each element, we have what we call a constitution. So we will see that if a dog is more wood, now you can already understand that maybe he can have some problem in his liver, in his tendon and ligament. And this case also, or this dog sometimes can have like some uh, inflammation of the eyes because the liver opens through the eyes. And some dogs with liver condition or uh, with a lot of anger, they have the red eyes. But now you understand why, because this would open on the eye. Then we go to the fire. The fire, we were in the spring. So after the spring, we have the summer. So the fire is the summer season. So of course it's very, lots of heat and the color is red. And it's the joy because usually it's summertime, everybody is happy. And the organ related to this element is the heart. And the um, tissue, it's the blood vessel, okay? So after the summer, we have what we call the late summer. It's the time of the harvest in China. So this is what we call the earth. And the earth is uh, related to the damp climate. It uh, start raining and it's like the yellow color because they harvest the fields. So it's a lots of yellow color. And the uh, organ related to the earth is the spleen. And the, sorry, the tissue is the muscle. And this one, it's the emotion related to the hearse is the worry. So it's the dog or the person who worry too much. After that, we go to the fall, the fall season, which is like the metal element. The climate is dry in the fall season in China is very dry and the color is white. The emotion is the sadness and the organ is the lung. 
And the last element is the water. The water is during the winter. So the climate, of course, is cold. The color is the black color. And the organ is the kidney. And the tissue is the bone. So this one is a very important element, the water element. So as I just said at the beginning, accordingly to all these five elements, we have also what we call the constitution or the personality. So you or the pet, it's the same. We are more like one or one element. So maybe you are more a wood person or more like a water person. So here's just some information so you can easily classify yourself or you can classify also the pets that are coming to see you. And this can give you a lot of information because let's see at the wood personality. So you remember the wood is during the spring and the wood dogs or the wood person, they are like the dominant one. They are the aggressive. So it's the dog who wants to bite you because he's not scared just because he is aggressive. That's it. They are very confident. So you remember wood, the organ is the liver. So, and the, um, the organ also, I mean, the, it's the tendon and the ligament. So of course this wood dog, they can have some imbalance issue in the liver. And of course they can have some seizure issue or they can have some tendon ligament issue. So just by knowing the personality, the constitution of your pets, you already have some information or maybe where you will have the imbalance in the body. So let's continue with the fire dog. So the fire dog is more like uh, this poodle, the one who is very friendly, very happy to see you. He likes to be the center of attention. He will come to see you, but he will never stop being happy. So this one, you remember the fire is associated with the heart. So this dog can have some balance, imbalance, sorry, in his heart. So he can suffer from heart condition. So maybe try to listen to his heart because he may have some issue in this, uh, in this element. The earth dog is like the golden retriever. They are like very easy going. They are friendly. They come to see you and then they go and sleep. So they are very nice dog. They are very sweet. And this one, you remember the hearth is related to the spleen. The spleen in Chinese medicine is all the gastrointestinal tract. So this dog, usually they like to eat a lot and sometimes they have some obesity issue. And of course, they can have some imbalance in the gastrointestinal tract. So they can have some gastrointestinal diseases. Then we have the metal. The metal, you remember, it's like, um, it's typically like the, the cat. They are very aloof. They are very independent. You remember the emotion is the sadness. So they don't like the change. They are upset if you change something. And the um, organ related to the metal, it's the lung. So it's typical the cat who has some asthma attack or asthma issue. And the last one, you remember the winter, it's the water element. So the water constitution, it's the dog that can also bite you, but not because he's aggressive, just because he's so scared that he will bite you. So they, it's the very timid or the very shy dog is very nervous. And you remember water is related to kidney and to bone. So of course he can have some issue in his bone, some arthritis, or he can have some uh, kidney disease. So this is very important notion to have in your mind these five elements and important to try to uh, discover the constitution of the pets so for that we will see during the tcvm consultation that you have to ask lots of questions to the owner and you have also to observe the pets and then you can already have an idea of this constitution of course all these five elements they are interconnected you remember so we have the normal cycle, and of course, we have the control cycle, and we have the pathological cycle. So just let's see here. So we have the liver, you remember, the heart, spleen, lung, and kidney. So we call, let's take the example of the liver. The liver is called the mom of the heart. So the heart is the son of the liver. And we have also the key cycle, like the liver is called the grandma, the grandmother, of the spleen and the spleen then is like the grandchild 
So you see, it's not so easy, as I say, like uh, you are like a wood constitution, so liver, you can have some issue in your, in your liver, but of course, if you have issue here, then it will affect the child, it will affect the heart, and it can also affect the spleen, like the grandchild. So of course, they are all interconnected. So we have the pathological cycle, the thing I just say to you now. So let's take, again, go back to this, uh, to this picture. So that's what I say. If, let's say, the liver is sick, so the mother is sick, of course, the child, the heart, will be sick. And the same, if the child is sick, the heart, it can affect the mom, the mother, because the mother is tired taking care of the sick child. And the same thing, like the grandmother, if the grandchild is sick, like if the spleen is sick, it will affect his grandma, his grandmother. And the same thing, if the grandmother is too good, if she controls too much the grandchild, it will affect his health. So I know it's lots of information, so let's just take an example to make it clear. So let's see this 12 years old cat. He has a chronic polyuria polydipsia. It's a very timid and shy cat, and he's thick warmth all the time. His hair feels very cold. So this is more like an exterior or interior disease. So apparently, he has a chronic polyuria, polydipsia, so we suspect some issue with his kidney. Kidney is an internal organ, so it's more an interior disease. Let's take the next question. This is more an excess condition or a deficiency condition. This is what a 12 years old cat and he has a chronic condition. So of course we are not on any excess condition. This is a deficiency. This is more what, hot or cold? We are saying that his hair feels cold and is looking for the warm place. So most probably this is a cold deficiencies. So you remember, so this is more like a young deficiency. And uh, which organ does it affect? Polyuria, polydipsia, we say it's the kidney in the conventional medicine. So of course it will be the water because this cat is more a water cat because it's very timid, very shy. So its constitution is water. And you remember the organ related to water is the kidney. So it's quite logic that we have an imbalance in his kidney. And the pattern for this cat will be a kidney young deficiency. So that's just the sum up of what we say, just to uh, explain you again, to all these five elements, each element is related to one TCVM or what we call a Zhang Fu organ. So the organ is a little bit the same as the um, like the Western organ, but it's like more more global. So just to put this picture again to remind you, we have the wood element, and the wood element, the organ is the liver. The fire is the heart. The earth is the spleen. The metal is the lung, and the water is the kidney organ. So here is just like some information about this organ. So if we start from the heart, the heart it's opening in the tongue. So the lung, you remember, so the lung is from the metal and it's opening in the nose. We have the spleen, we have the liver. So the liver, I told you it's opening in the eyes and the kidney, the kidney is from the water element and it's dominate the bone. So of course, all the arthritis dogs will have an imbalance in the kidney and it's open in the ears. So this also is something like you understand why the old dog, sometimes they have like some uh, arthritis and they start to uh, lose the hearing um, condition. It's because also the kidney open in the ears. So now that you have all this notion, you are able to do your TCVM diagnostic. So we have to check if it's more excess or deficiency condition, if it's more a yin or yang or a qi condition, and in which zhang fu, in which organ we have the imbalance. So we have to answer these two questions. Where is the imbalance? So for that, we use what we just learned about the five elements. So is it more in the liver? That's 
what you usually have, the liver, the heart, the spleen, the lung, or the kidney. Then what is it? It's an excess condition or it's a deficiency condition. So this is just like some sum up information. You will have more like what we call a general deficiency. So there is no temperature preference. It's not either hot or either cold. It's just like a very fatigued dog. He has a lot of exercise intolerance, a general weakness. He has anorexia, he has loose tools. So this is just a basic chi deficiency. And in which organ, this you use your five elements to discover in which organ you have this uh, deficiency. We have more a yin deficiency. In this case, we have all the cool seeking dogs. He has a low fever, his red is, uh, his, sorry, his tongue is, is red, his skin is dry, and he is like, you know, it's the dog with sleeping on the sofa. But the owner will tell you, yeah, after a few minutes, he always go and sit on the floor because he feels hot. Or on the contrary, you have the young deficiency. In this case, you have the fatigue, but you have also a lot of cold sign, like the dog, you touch him and he feels really, really cold. So this case is really like the very weak pets and the very, very old animals. So to get more information to help you like to classify your disease. You have to inspect your dog. You have to hear and smell the dog. You have to touch him and you have to ask a lot of questions to the owner. So I'll just uh, go to these two, two things, the tongue and the pulse, because this is really what will help you to classify your disease. And this is the two things that you will have to check. The thing that maybe you are not checking in your daily uh, daily routine, but this is something in Chinese medicine and in acupuncture. Every pet, you have to check the color of the tongue because it will give you a lot of information. Of course, it's quite difficult because it's depending on the person who is looking at the tongue. So I think it's the best is to check the tongue of every pet that is coming to your clinic, like the one who is coming just for vaccination, the one who are healthy. Just check the color and see how the normal tongue looks like. So the normal color, it's like the pink. We say it's like the, the peach tree. And this is a really the basic color. In any case of excess, too much heat or deficient heat, so in the yin condition, we have the red tongue. So if you see the color of the tongue is very red, and if your dog is always looking for cold place, it's easy, you know, that you have a yin deficiency. On the contrary, if the tongue is very pale, in this case, you have a chi or a yang deficiency. And the purple one, it means there is pain in the body. There is a stagnation of energy. So you can check the, tomorrow or today at the consultation, you see a, a pet who is coming, who is feeling a lot of pain. Just check the color of his tongue and you will see this purple color. So here I know on the picture it's not easy to see the difference, but you have like on the, um, on the bottom left side, the, the normal tongue. So you see the same color at the peach tree, the flower of the peach tree. And you have on the left, on the right side, sorry, you have, you can see the pale tongue, you see the difference. And on the bottom you have like the red one. So the red one, usually it's quite easy to see. The purple, like on the top, you can see the on the left side, you see the tip is quite okay, but like on the middle, you see it's more like purple, purple color. This means like your dog is feeling pain. So of course you will have to put some needle, specific needle to relieve the pain. And the other thing that you will always have to check is the pulse. So you have to check the color of the tongue and you have to check the pulse. So for the dogs, the cats and the dog, you check at the femoral artery pulse. So you just put your finger on this uh, femoral artery, and then you can compare the pulse at the left and the right side. So the pulse, of course, is quite difficult to feel because it depends also on the doctor who is feeling. Maybe I will feel something and you will feel something a little bit different. So you have to train yourself. So the same thing, every pet that is coming to see you, just check the tongue and also check the pulse. It takes a few seconds and huh? just check and see. Like you have a puppy who is coming, is very healthy. You will feel his pulse and you will see that the pulse is like 
it will be your base basic normal pulse and then you can compare if you see like a very older who is coming to see you with a lot of arthritis issue then you will feel sometimes you can even not feel the pulse is so weak so it's so much deficiency in the dog that you cannot feel the pulse so you will do your acupuncture session and maybe at the next session or at the end of the session you check again your pulse and this time oh i can feel my pulse now so it already means that you already help your pets so this is just some information if you have a rapid pulse it's most probably a heat issue or if the pulse is very slow it's more like a cold pattern if it's very forceful like you really feel your pulse very well most probably it's an excess condition but again the one that you will see in acupuncture will be more like the deficient patients so it will be a very weak pulse and as I say, sometimes you can even not really feel the pulse. Then if you are feeling better with the pulse, you can compare the right side and the left side. So this is just some basic information, again, to help you. If the pulse is weaker at the right side, it means we are more a chi or yang deficiency. But if it's weaker at the left side, it's more a yin deficiency. So you remember the yin dog is the one who may have a low fever, and the one who is always looking for cold place. So what you have to take home, I know it's a lot of information and it's very hard to sum up all that, but I still want you to understand that acupuncture is not just like the cookbook method, like the one, you, otherwise you can just go buy a book and check, okay, I put this point and this point. It's really important if you want to go further and if you really want to treat your dog properly and you have if you want to go deeper, you have to find your TCVM diagnostic, your TCVM pattern. And for that, it's really important to remember the notion of excess and deficiency and these five elements, the wood, the fire, the earth, the metal and the water. And accordingly to these five elements, you have what we call the constitution. Either your dog is more water or more fire, and you remember we have the TCVM organ related to each constitution or each element. So you know that, okay, I'm seeing today this dog, I see it's the golden retriever, he's more like a hearse constitution and he's a little bit overweight. And today is coming, uh, I can see his history he always has some gastrointestinal issue. This is logic in TCVM because you can see that he is more hearse and the hearse the organ related to the hearse is the spleen. And uh, today you check his heart and you see that he is having some heart murmur. This is also logic in Chinese medicine. You can understand the relation between the symptoms. Like in basic medicine, okay, he has the heart condition and he also has his gastrointestinal issue. But in Chinese medicine, you remember the sick child will cause a sick mother. And the mother of the hearse is the fire. So of course, if you always have some gastrointestinal issue, it's a very sick child, it will cause the mother to be sick. So it can also have some heart condition. So you see, I know it can, can look complicated, but in Chinese medicine, you can understand and you can see the logic in the different symptoms. Like if the dog is coming today, for this condition, but by treating this condition in Chinese medicine, you can help also his heart condition. So the thing you have to remember, the difference for your clinical examination will be to check the tongue and the pulse. So what you can try to do again from now, nowadays, every dog who is coming or cat who is coming to see you, you can just check the tongue color and check the pulse. So you really need to learn the TCVM theories again to get the correct pattern and to have the best results. And if you remember at the end of the first uh, lesson, I told you that acupuncture is very safe and that you cannot harm your patient. But if you want to go further and some condition, you have to add what we call the Chinese herbs. In this case, you really have to be careful because if you don't use the correct medicine, the herbal medicine, you can make the condition worse. So in this case, you really have to add the correct TCVM diagnosis. So you understand that it's important 
but for nowadays you will start practicing with acupuncture only so don't be worried don't be scared like oh my god i don't know i'm not sure about the, if it's excess i'm not sure if it's more the kidney or the liver it's okay you will not harm your pets by the needle only but later on if you want to go further you really have to learn and to really be sure about your tcvm diagnostic but with all this information that i gave you now you can already start practicing and start like uh, it's like a little game try to find okay it's more this constitution so maybe it's more an excess and then you can try to add some point that will make the difference in your treatment and then you will see the result and then you want to go further and maybe use the herbal but this is really to make you understand the power of the chinese medicine and the power of this diagnostic so now we will do the last presentation for today i know it's a lot of uh, information so this one will be more practical because we will see oops sorry one second we will see the acupoint and the acupuncture technique so don't worry, this presentation will be like uh, easier to understand and it will be more practical, like because we talk a lot about theory, but how we use, uh, how we do the, the acupuncture. So first we'll see how to needle an acupoint. Of course, we always use sterile needle and this is the size because you can have, uh, you can choose a lot of different size. So this is the size I use I feel confident and comfortable with this size for the cat and the small dog. And this is the one I'm using, the bigger one for the bigger dog. So you can use different size, but this is what I feel quite good. So nowadays I'm working in Europe. So of course you have different brand available. And I'm using like mostly this one because it's like a good compromise between the price and they are like very good quality needles. Of course, you can find lots of different needles. And of course, depending on your preference, you will find the best needle for you. But it's still important to take good quality needles because of course, if it's like the needle is not going in easily and it's painful for the pets, of course, the acupuncture session will not be very nice for the dogs, for you, for anyone. So it's still important to use good quality needles. And the needles usually also are not really expensive. So I'll only use once. Of course, you can sterilize your needle and use several times. But of course, the more time you will use the needle, the harder it will be to put the needle in. So this is sometimes you can have what we call like a, the handle like the sorry the individual guide tube that can help you to put your needle in the point so this also some doctors at the beginning they prefer to have the guide tube like me i don't really like it and i just put the needle directly so it's again depending on your preference this is like the picture of the real size of the needle so you see on the left side is the small one and on the right is the biggest one, so that I put on the on the higher on the bigger dog. So the preparation it's important. Of course, you understand that your animal has to be quiet, has to be relaxed. Of course, it's much better if you don't use any sedation. You also have to feel relaxed, and the best is to have like a special room to do it. I know that uh, nowadays in the clinic it can be like very busy and very noisy. So if, if you can have a special room, a special quiet place, of course, it's better because everyone will feel more relaxed. If you cannot, like when I was working in Vietnam, I used to have a lot of acupuncture um, session and it was like an open space, like uh, big dogs, cats, and I was still able to do it. But of course, if you can have a special area, it will be better. You can use also, this is a small tip, you can use some lavender oil because it will relax the pets, yourself, the owner, and it will also provide a good smell. So this is quite useful. Try also to use whatever help you to feel more relaxed. Like you can use these soft toys. This is also a tip. It's also quite good because either if it's a small pet or a small cat, you can put him on the top. 
so it's easier for you then to uh, apply your needle. Also, some cats, they like to hide the heads below the, uh, the soft toys, so they feel more comfortable. So this is an example of a kitten on the top. You see, I just put a towel on the, on the toys, and then you just block your small kitten on the, on the toys. So this is different example. So, of course, if it's a big dog, sometimes they don't feel uh, confident on the table, so you can do it directly on the floor. If you have some big pillow or so, they can just sit on the pillow. Or some dogs like this, uh, this small one on the, on the bottom, you always like to be like on the up position. So you have to adapt yourself. The pets have to feel confident. You can use like this soft collar. So also, it depends, it's not compulsory, but sometimes you feel like uh, more comfortable if you are scared that the cat or the dog will bite you because you will see most of the pond, they are on the back area, so you feel more safe. And also sometimes the cats, if they have this soft collar, they don't really see what's happening at the back and they also sometimes feel more relaxed. This is just an example uh, of the lavender oil that you can you can just put some uh, drops on the top of your soft toys. Or if you use a towel, you just put a little bit on the towel. So now how to uh, insert the needle. So again, as I said, you can use at the beginning the tube guiding if you feel confident with this one. Otherwise, the best is really like to do like a quick insertion. Like don't uh, like spend too much time. I know at the beginning it's a lot of stress because you are not sure about the location. And uh, this is also something like you have to know your anatomy very well because it will help you to find uh, the point. But don't worry because if you don't put the needle in the exact location, you remember will have an effect around the point. So even if you use the electric, um, the electroacupuncture machine, the effect will be even like a, a biggest effect around the, the needle. So don't be too scared if it's not the exact location. It's better to do a quick intention because it's less stress also for the pets. And then you can sometimes just like you want to uh, stimulate your needle. So you can just use your finger and thumbing around the needle. In some cases that you will not do at the beginning, you have to use the flying method like the cat who is not very happy with the needle, you have like to do it very quickly. So of course, at the beginning, you have to feel your points. You cannot use this technique, but when you are more confident, sometimes it's very useful because with time, you know your points. Some points are always coming and uh, always the same. So you, you feel very confident. So you can just put the needle very quickly and you will see that the needles have a calming effect so whenever the cat or the dog has all the needle in, it will feel more relaxed and then it will accept the needle. I never had any cats who cannot have acupuncture. Sometimes it's hard to put the needle, so I'm using the flying method, but as soon as the cat has the needle in, it will just sleep and, and wait the 20 minutes without any issue. We have also what we call the chi response, like sometimes, you will even feel like a small electricity or you will feel something like when you put the needle. It really means that you are at the correct location. Don't be scared if you don't feel it all the time because depending also on the pets, if this pawn was really, really, really needed, sometimes you put the needle and you feel like something. If you don't feel it, you are most probably still on the correct location. The only um, place where you cannot put directly the needle is if you have a skin infection or if you have an ulcer, a tumor or in the scar tissue. We will see later on that it's very useful to put the needle around, but not in the infection or in the tumor. This is a picture of uh, what we call the chi, the dead chi response. This was with the electroacupuncture, but sometimes, yes, when you do that, then you have the hair it's coming up. So it's really mean that this point was really, really needed today. Of course, the best is to try on yourself. So I hope that by next week, you will be able to get some needles and you can try this point because it's quite easy to do on yourself. And it's like a large intestine 11. 
it's uh, one half the distance between the biceps tendon and the lateral epicondyle of the humerus when the elbow is flexed. And this point is very useful for sore throat, for fever, for abdominal pain, for vomiting, diarrhea, hypertension, seizure, and conjunctivitis. So you see a lot of effects. So you just like uh, flex your elbow and it's like almost in the middle here. So this is how I keep the needle, but it depends how you feel confident, but like just between these two finger and then with the idex, oops, I press on the top. So you put the needle on the correct position and then you push with your finger the needle in. Again, sometimes, it's really a medicine that it's really an individual medicine. So sometimes all the needle will go in very easily. And sometimes the needle will not go inside. Just a little bit will go inside, but it will be very hard to push all the needle. Or you push the needle in and you see slowly the needle is coming out. So again, it's the body who do what he needs. So don't worry if you cannot push all the needle in. Sometimes you just have a small piece of the needle inside, but the, the needle will remain in place for the 20 minute session. And then you still have to remove the needle. So it's no worry. It's really depending on the, on the dogs, on the pets that you are seeing that day. It's depending on what the dog needs. Sometimes they really need all the needle in. Sometimes just a small area, small part of the needle are inside, but it will remain there. Also, sometimes the needle is popping out by itself. So if you just put the needle and it's coming out, I always try to put the needle again once. But again, if it's as soon as I put the needle in, pop, it's going out. It means today this is not a good point. So no worries, I have lots of options and I will come back to this point maybe at an other session. If the needle is going out after maybe 10 minutes, then it means the um, the, the point is uh, stimulate enough and uh, it doesn't need more stimulation. So if it's after 10 minutes, I will never put the needle back again. If the needle is going out by itself, it means the stimulation is over. Okay. And usually I leave the needle for 15 to 20 minutes. So this you remember at the first lecture, I told you that we have different techniques. Either we just put the dry needle. So the effect will last for a few days. Then we can connect to the electroacupuncture machine, and this will, will have a longer effect and a deeper effect to, uh, to stimulate the internal organ. So the only thing you have to remember already that never use electroacupuncture if you have a seizure, okay? Otherwise you can always use this one. Or we can do, you remember, we can inject something directly in the points. So this effect will last for one week. And usually what we inject, it's vitamin B12. And the last technique, it's the moxibution. This moxibution, it's only for the young deficiency. Do you remember the young deficiency? It's the very old pet who feels very, very cold. Then we really need to add some heat. And then we will use the moxa stick over the needle. So this is the picture of the electroacupuncture machine that I'm using. This is the one for the vets only. This one is very good because we have uh, seven uh, outputs, so seven uh, points that you can connect, the same machine. And also you can use your frequency. So you have different choice. Either you use only one frequency with F1, or you can use both F1 and F2. So if you use only one frequency, so we only have the F1 button on and the F2 is zero, we have what we call a continuous wave. And usually we use this setting for the pain condition. But if we use the two frequency, and in this case, the frequency two has to be higher than the frequency one. In this case, we have what we call the dense and dispersed waves. And this is more for the nerve paralysis and to touch the internal organs. So for any internal medicine. So what I usually do, it's I leave the needle for 20 minutes and I do 10 minutes with only F1 if my patient feels some pain and then I want to treat the deeper um, organ then I do F2 higher than F1 for 10 more minutes so the total is 20 minutes 
So again, this is some example. So usually also the pets, they accept this electroacupuncture very well, depending on how it goes at the first session. If I see that the pet is very confident and no stress, the first session I can already use the machine, but sometimes I wait for the second session to use the electroacupuncture machine. This is the moxibution. So you remember I say this is only like for the really cold pattern and uh, we use what we call a moxa stick. Just uh, be careful because this moxa stick, they smell, um, they have a very strong smell. So if you do it in the clinic, you have either to open the windows or you have to uh, inform the owner about the strong smell. This is an example here of the moxa stick. But I don't really use this one because this is really in the very, very cold patient. So I'm not seeing this every day. This is the B12. You remember I told you that sometimes we can inject something in some point that we will discuss later. And usually what we inject, it's vitamin, pure vitamin B12. Now the different points, you remember we have two, two different kind of points. We have the transpositional points, the one who are located on the meridian, and you remember we have the classical acupoint. So the transpositional points are on the meridian and they are transposed to dogs from the human or the horse. And you remember it's a unique combination of letter and number, like ST36, it's called stomach 36. ST, it's for the stomach, so it's located on the stomach meridian, and it's the 36 points on this specific meridian. And the classical acupuncture, you remember, they are called by the Chinese name. Another thing which is important that will help you to find your points, it's the acupuncture unit. It's called the Kun. Kun. So you understand that if you have a small dog or a big dog, if I say maybe it's three centimeters from the head of the, uh, of the fibula or something like that, it will depend between the small and the big dog. So the kun is a relative or proportional measurement unit which is used to locate the acupuncture points. So each bone has a specific number of kun. Like you see, like the femur is 18 kun. So if I say two thirds of the femur size, then it will be the same place if it's a small dog or a big dog. So this is why they did this, uh, this measurement unit. So this is the kun. So on the description of the location of the point, sometimes you will see this kun unit. Here we go to all the meridian and the channel. You remember we say we have a total of 14 meridian. So the 12 major meridians and the two extra one, the conception vessel and the governing vessel. And here you have the number of points on all these specific channels. So you see at the end, it's a lot, a lot of points. So you will receive, I don't know if you already get it, or we will send you like a booklet that I made that you will have all the um, basic information that we discussed today. And also you will have the description of all the major acupoints that we will discuss during the next session. So you will have the description and then the best of course is to practice. So you really have to try practicing, put the needle on yourself because you will have to explain to the customer that it's not painful. You will see that the needle is not hard, it's very flexible needle. So the best is always to try on yourself so you can explain to the owner how it feels. So the question we will just see in a few minutes and I uh, just want to introduce what we will see the next Saturday. So I know today was a lot of information so you will have the week to review and to try to uh, understand all of that. Of course, if you have questions, you will have the WhatsApp group when you can post your question and I will be able to reply to you directly. And the next Saturday, we will go, of course, deeper. So we will see how to select the acupoint because you see just now that it's a lot of acupoints. So how I will choose this point over this one. So this we will discuss next Saturday. We will go and have a look 
at the TCVM consult, how you can conduct the TCVM con consultation. And we will also be more practical and we will see how you can use acupuncture in your daily practice. This will be very useful because we will have a lot of symptomatic points that you can use every day, like the dog who is hospitalized, who is not eating. We will see some very useful points that you can use. Thank <music> you.